my name is Dick Carr. I grew up in northern Ohio and my father was a math professor at a small engineering school and that school, Indiana Institute of Technology, and they used to have all kinds of antique technology around and, and since I was an experimenter and enjoyed building circuits and uh, vacuum tube circuits and little transistor circuits and things, my dad would bring things home for me. So one day he came trundling home back in the early 60s with this color television converter. So being an enterprising young man that I was, I actually decided I was going to install it on a television set and make it work. And I did successfully install it on a uh, small, uh, uh, on a like a 17 inch black and white television set and uh, got it to work and ran it for successfully for a couple years. So there are three components to it and those three components are the color sequential color disk, a set of electronics that you wire into the television set that decodes the color signal and drives the disk, and then another very small aluminum box that's very important, has some variable inductors in it, and this is wired in series with a deflection yoke and it allows you, allows you to cut down the size of the picture so it fits within the window and move it to the corner of the screen so it fits in the window of the color scanning disk. And basically what this device does is it hooks into the uh, video output that's going to the picture tube and picks off the, the black and white, the monochrome picture signal that also contains the color components and processes that just like any other color television set to extract the, uh, the uh, phase uh, encoded color signals and then returns a signal back to the grid of the picture tube and what that signal is is when the red disk is scanning disk is in front of the picture tube it sends only the red information and likewise for the green or blue so this disk spins fast enough that you actually can get a perception of a complete color image uh, one of the advantages of this in those days is that unlike picture tubes of the day, because it used color filters, actually the color was pretty accurate, more accurate than most of the picture tube sets of that day were. So it uh, uh, generated a, a nice quality, small, and it was a little inconvenient to have this big spinning disc in front of your black and white TV, but it did generate a high quality, small uh, picture. And I can remember the first time I fired it up seeing the Rose Bowl Parade, and in this small town I lived in, almost no one had color television. So I was one of the first people to actually watch the Rose Bowl Parade in color using my color converter. You might wonder about the scanning, about synchronization of the disc. And my experience was, it, it takes the vertical and horizontal scanning pulses also with two additional leads that wire into the set and it has a synchronous motor and it has a, a circuit that actually generates the voltage as a synchronous uh, voltage for the motor so it keeps the disc in sync with the uh, frames in the tube and surprisingly enough once you have it adjusted working right you can just turn it on and after a few minutes of warm up it stays locked for hours at a time so uh, so despite what you might think with a scanning disc it actually is uh, very accurate and worked extremely well for the years that I used it. I ran it for a number of years and then at that point uh, took it off when I went to college and it's basically I've carefully been storing it and preserving it all these years looking for someone who I thought might really take care of it and use it. So I'm really looking forward to having the uh, television museum restore it and put it back into service so other people can experience this era of early television.